Greetings, class. Welcome to our sixth week of our class, The Theology of Urban Ministry. This week, we continue with our discussion of Ronald Peters' seven core values of urban ministry. Last week, we dealt with the first two, which were theism and love, and I appreciate the way that you all address those issues. I want to be certain to uh, get more of you into the discussion this week uh, as we look at the next two uh, core values, the core values of uh, communication and justice. We're going to deal with the core value of justice today, and you will note from your reading that uh, uh, Ronald Peters deals with uh, this core value uh, in greater depth uh, than he deals with most of the other ones. And I would say that of the seven core values, uh, this one is perhaps uh, the most controversial of the core values that he addresses. Uh, controversial in the sense that uh, there are many under, different understandings of what core, uh, what justice really means. In fact, if you will note from your reading uh, that Dr. Peters uh, lists uh, two difficulties uh, in his uh, uh, writing about uh, justice. And I want to remind you of those two. They are found on page 19 in your, uh, 119 in your text, rather. And there Peters writes, quote, yet there are at least two major factors that have contributed to the confusion that now surrounds almost any discussion of justice. First, in today's society, the notion of justice seems to have become almost exclusively associated with jurisprudence and the enforcement of applicable laws of the land, whether in cases of criminal or civil law, unquote. He also writes further down the page, quote, second, the problem of discussing justice is further complicated in the United States by the involvement of the entertainment industry, which has made various judicial proceedings in the nation a matter of public amusement." Unquote. He then goes on uh, to speak at uh, some length about justice uh, in Scripture, quoting uh, various passages of Scripture and using as uh, his uh, main uh, dialogue partner excuse me, a professor of mine when I was in seminary back in the dark ages, Kane Hope Felder. Uh, Dr. Felder has a book, you can find it in our library, and I certainly commend it to you, entitled Troubling Biblical Waters. In that book, uh, Felder talks about the term justice, and uh, Peters quotes him on page 120. This is what he says, quote, Felder notes that the term justice in Greek antiquity included more than is associated with the term today, citing that the notion involved ideas about observing the law, doing the right thing, honesty, respect for other person's property, and rights and fair play." Unquote. He then goes into a discussion uh, talking about how uh, justice was viewed in Hellenistic society or Greek society of that time, and even going so far as to say that their notions were not so much grounded in their religion as uh, the notion of justice was grounded in their understanding of politics and philosophy. I think you will agree with me today that it seems to be uh, the same case in our society, that our understanding of justice is grounded not in what we believe in terms of our faith, uh, but in how it gets defined uh, in the, the political arenas or in society at large with all the diff different philosophical understandings of justice. 
I don't believe that as Christians, we have, if I can put it this way, the luxury of defining justice in that type of way. But the Old Testament uh, admonishes us uh, to, uh, uh, to, that God requires of us uh, to, to do justice, uh, to love mercy, and to walk humbly uh, with our God. And so justice is not so much how the world defines it for us, but how God defines it. And certainly scripture admonishes us to care for the widow and the orphan and the alien and the stranger among us. And you can unpack that in all its various ways and then apply it to the, the various issues uh, that confront us today. I, I am concerned that we in the church in particular have allowed a, a political and philosophical uh, definition of justice to overtake and overshadow and maybe in some places replace a biblical understanding of the term justice. Uh, for instance, if I can give you an example, the term tolerance is a term that has become redefined in our day. And it's an important term as it relates to the presenting societal issues of our time. I can remember in my own lifetime uh, that tolerance was defined as respect for another's perspective, viewpoint, or lifestyle without agreeing with it or certainly embracing it. But today, tolerance has become defined as not only respect, not only embracing or, or agreeing, but also embracing and celebrating. Therefore, if you only respect someone's viewpoint, but disagree with it, refuse to embrace it, and to celebrate it, you are now suddenly labeled as intolerant. That definition stems from a very broad uh, definition of what it means to do justice. Uh, Cain Felder identifies in his book, Troubling Biblical Waters, and Ronald Peters references this in his discussion, he identifies five scriptural understandings concerning justice and says that those things, are, or at least uh, Peter says, those things inform, uh, quote, the urban context of ministry's focus on ensuring that those most vulnerable in society are treated with respect and dignity. These include one, reciprocal ju uh, justice, which emphasizes the golden rule approach to justice, treating others as you want to be treated. Secondly, eschatological justice, which is the affirmation of belief that even when injustice prevails in the short term, God's accounting of fairness will ultimately prevail over time and or finally in the eternal reality. And third, cons compensatory justice, which involves redress redressing past injury and remedy hurt with restitution or reparations. Um, four, communica uh, com commutative justice which is the strategic disavow disavowal of one's own rights in order to produce the possibility of greater future harm or to bring about an improved reality, such as the Apostle Paul declining to claim his right to be paid for his work as an apostle. And then five, charismatic distributive justice, which refers to the unique and divinely given characteristics or abilities possessed by different persons uh, as represented uh, in 1 Corinthians and Romans. Uh, all of these things are important, but the bottom line is this. Uh, how we understand justice, and we cannot 
operate solely on a worldly definition of justice. I believe that if we do so, we open ourselves up for any and everything. We have to understand that there is a standard in the Word of God. Uh, we do not need to go beyond it, uh, but we do need to embrace it and incorporate it in all that we do and all that we say. Uh, it is just uh, to seek fair treatment of those who are disenfranchised and marginalized, but it is also just uh, to refuse to allow ourselves to become codependent um, with those who have the ability to do for themselves but will not do for themselves. Justice has uh, multiple ways that it gets uh, implied. Uh, it, it is just uh, to, to deal with the consequences uh, of our sin. Uh, it is just uh, to uh, seek after the welfare uh, of those who are less fortunate. So this is a core value. But to my thinking, this core value must always be filtered through uh, the lens of Scripture. Does this accord with what the Word of God says? And you will note, even uh, with Peter's perspective, Ronald Peter's perspective in his book, which in my mind is, can lend itself to uh, drawing outside the lines a little bit, that he goes to great degrees to bring Scripture in. Now, you will need to look at that and read the Scripture to see whether, in your opinion, it falls into the category in some ways of proof texting or whether the scripture that is cited lends credibility and credence to Peter's argument. I want to hang my hat on the fact that doing justice, showing justice, Living justice is an indispensable core value of urban ministry. In your discussion this week, should you choose, <laughs> sounds a little bit like Mission Impossible, but should you choose to address this particular core value, I trust that you will uh, engage it forthrightly and that you will seek to engage your uh, colleagues in this class in a spirited discussion uh, about justice and how you view it. I hope that this video was helpful to you and that you get something out of it that will help you as you dialogue this week. Thank you for watching and listening and we'll be back in our next video uh, on the the core value of communication. Until next time.